Happiness is not an object, nor the attribute of an object. You can be happy and unhappy anywhere. Happiness, therefore, does not depend on being or not being in a given place. The mind is not happiness. There is no place called happiness. However, there is something that is happiness yes, yourself. You have to learn how to know this happiness. You need to know yourself. The world of dualities does not disturb your happiness when you know yourself. Unload people and things from your mind. This is a crucial step in mastering the inner well-being without which spiritual growth is not possible. This is the basic person, the conscious being. We woke up in the morning. The world is out there, as if waiting for us. Many things happen to us, some we like, others not so much. Everything happens in this open space that we are. Absolutely everything depends on your reality, to this reality that you are. The images of a mirror cannot exist without the mirror. The reality that we are, which we can never deny, works and lives in us, through us, and as us. There's nothing else. That's all. One space. Pure consciousness, where outside and inside are the same space. Boundaries are conventions, which obviously emerge from this single space. Thus, the reality of life is woven. But this space from which everything arises is fullness. We are already this space, even if on a personal level, nothing belongs to us. What comes up at every moment is what we are. If we seek fullness and peace, we move away. If we forget this fullness and this peace, and give ourselves completely to what arises, whatever it is, we find ourselves. And as we find it, we find peace and wholeness. You may want something to be different than it is. It is your privilege to have that kind of desire. You may be correct in your perception of things, you may be partially correct, or you may be mistaken. In any case, accept all things as they are. If someone is a source of frustration for you, visualize that person. In your perception, guarantee her the freedom to be as she is. Keep that person external. Keep everything external. Discharge people who may have inadvertently crept under your skin. In any case, accept all people as they are. When you give people the freedom to be who they are, you grow. You become magnanimous and at peace with yourself. Stay in peace. Just be at peace with yourself. If you are at peace with yourself, that peace does not derive, it does not come from anywhere. It is what you are. This peace is you. Most people are like the moth that wanders around with no purpose. She doesn't seem to really get anywhere, nor does she stop for more than a moment before a new distraction attracts her. The bee, however, works and prepares for difficult times. The moth lives only according to the day. When winter comes, the moth disappears, while the bee remains storing food to live. We must learn to gather and store up the honey of peace and the power of God. Those who meditate deeply feel a wonderful inner stillness. The greater the peace you feel in meditation, the closer you will be to God. It draws nearer to you as you go deeper into meditation. It focuses your attention within you. You will feel a new power, a new strength and a new peace in your body, mind and spirit. You have the privilege and opportunity to build your own heaven right here, and you have all the means to do it. All you have to do is cut through the restless thoughts one by one. When they are all dead, the divine realm of wisdom will be yours. 
There is a cure for stress. Calm. Calmness is the ideal state with which we should welcome all of life's experiences. Nervousness is the opposite of calm, and it is so widespread today that it has become a worldwide affliction. The best remedy against nervousness is to cultivate calm. You must perform all your actions peacefully, for peace is the best medicine for body, mind and soul. You are now limited, when, however, by daily and profound meditation, he can transfer his consciousness from the finite to the infinite, he will be free. You are not meant to be a prisoner of the body. You are a child of God and must live up to that divine inheritance. This is the most wonderful way to live. Our lives should continually reflect this constant bliss. Never allow anything to take away your inner happiness. Remain undisturbed. You must learn the art of living like an intrepid soul, capable of smiling in the face of any problem. We should model our lives after the design of a triangle, the two sides are calm and sweetness, and the third side, the base, is happiness. It doesn't matter if we act quickly or slowly, alone or amidst the hubbub, our inner center must be balanced and serene. Christ is an example of this ideal, for wherever he was he always manifested peace. He passed every imaginable test without losing his composure. Whatever your situation in life, never feel justified in losing your peace. When it leaves you and you cannot think clearly, then you have lost the battle. If you never lose your battle, you will realize that victory always accompanies you, regardless of how your problems are resolved. This is the way to conquer life. Win the battle of everyday life. If you are able to preserve inner peace, you enjoy the supreme victory. At all times, practice imperturbable calm. Don't allow anything to disturb that pleasant realm of calm. Night and day, carry with you the ecstasy of the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. This mental equanimity eliminates the annoyance, disappointment and afflictions of daily life, transforming life into a most interesting and joyful experience of the soul. Don't wait until tomorrow, we tend to think that we will look for this peace tomorrow, but that way we will never find it. Look for it right now.